on the ground at this point. Um, but again, Fort Hood, Texas, thousands of people living and working there. It is described by some as the largest military facility in the world. Uh, it is huge. Troops rotating in and out of Afghanistan from this site. Uh, young combat troops who no doubt felt that they were safe at home here in Fort Hood, but uh, obviously a terrible tragedy happening. All right, so there uh, this the part of the tape that we missed at the top. Uh, Lieutenant General Bob Cohen briefing all of us uh, just seconds ago on what has happened at around 1.30 p.m. local time, central time zone in Texas. Uh, this, uh, uh, he says a soldier opened fire, uh, killing 12, wounding 31, all U.S. military personnel. There are two other soldiers who are determined to be suspects right now uh, who have been arrested uh, out of an abundance of caution. They're continuing the lockdown to make sure that uh, everything has been resolved. Uh, but he clarified uh, for all of us exactly what they know right now. And I just want to report uh, that, uh, remember, these are all initial reports. He's getting his information from individuals, and this is obviously subject to change. But let me bring in retired uh, U.S. Army General Wesley Clark, the former NATO Supreme Allied Commander. You heard uh, Lieutenant General Cohen uh, explain uh, what's going on, uh, General Clark, and he did clarify a lot. He seems like he's got as good a grip on the situation now as you could possibly expect. I mean, obviously, there's going to be an intensive uh, investigation to determine what the motivations were. Who are the suspects? Are they really soldiers? And um, and then. Who else might have known about it? So forth. There'll be a lot of, lot to come out of this over the days to come. But the most important thing for him right now, and for Fort Hood, is that the incident's over, and uh, that the other soldiers are all accounted for. Yeah, that's uh, that was the good news. Let me just update our viewers here in the United States and around the world what's going on. We've been covering the breaking news out of Fort Hood, Texas now for the past hour here in the Situation Room. Uh, and this is what we know. This coming from uh, U.S. Army Lieutenant General Bob Cohen, who just briefed reporters at Fort Hood, Texas, the largest U.S. Army base in the world uh, at any one time, 40 or 50,000 soldiers based at Fort Hood uh, at around 1.30 p.m. Central Time. That would be 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, a soldier, he says, opened fire inside what's called the uh, Soldier Readiness Facility, the Army Readiness Facility. Troops are doing the final paperwork, getting a little uh, medical uh, assistance, dental work, before they get ready to head off to war in Afghanistan or Iraq. Uh, this, this alleged shooter opened fire, killed 12 wounded 31 we believe all to be united states military personnel two other soldiers are deemed to be suspects right now uh, they've been apprehended uh, and uh, the lockdown though continues out of what he describes as an abundance of caution on this huge huge base but it sounds uh, unless they find other suspects out there like they have the situation under control uh, but i want to caution our viewers that uh, these are still preliminary reports, and they're going to be very, very careful uh, before they say this incident has been resolved uh, once and for all. Tom Foreman is here uh, at the map, uh, the Google map, and you've been showing us uh, what's going on. Uh, this is an area, this readiness center here, Tom, this is where the troops get ready to head off to war. Exactly. This is, this is the area we're talking about. And now, Wolf, with this new information, uh, it looks like we're really talking about a focused area here. Remember, we had reports throughout this about some activity near the Howes Theater. We had reports at various times about activity at the softball fields. And we've had reports about what might have gone on down here at the PX down here further away. But I know from my experience around big shootings like this, that's also not uncommon that people become, you know, people start fleeing, people get nervous, things happen, and many people see all sorts of things that they report, which may or may not have anything to do with it. It may all be contained in this readiness center here. We'll just have to find out as this, as this progresses from this point. Um, I did want to ask, is the general still with us? General Wolf? Clark, are you still with us? Yes, I am. General uh -huh. Clark, uh, General Clark uh, it's good to speak to you, but not on these circumstances, of course. Uh, a question for you. When you are in command of a base like this, at a moment like this, what are you trying to accomplish at this moment? Trying to establish order. In other words, you're trying to separate out fact from fiction, get your people accounted for, get the family members safe. And um, the chain of command 
is all out there hustling and working and trying to make something happen and get the facts. So he's being besieged by lots of reports, lots of ideas, mostly first reports. All right, I'm going to I'm going to interrupt, General. Here's the president. Please, everybody, have a seat. Uh, let, let me first of all just thank Ken. Uh, and the entire Department of the Interior staff for organizing just an extraordinary conference. Uh, I want to thank my cabinet members and senior admi administration officials who participated today. Uh, I hear that Dr. Joe Medicine Crow was around, and so I want to give a shout out to that Congressional Medal of Honor winner. It's good to see you. My understanding is, is that uh, you had uh, an extremely productive conference. Uh, I want to thank all of you for coming and for your efforts. Uh, and I want to give you my solemn guarantee that this is not the end of a process, but a beginning of a process. And that we are going to follow up. We, we are going to follow up. Every single member of my team understands that this is a top priority for us. Uh, I, I want you to know that, as I said this morning, uh, this, this is not something that we just give lip service to. Uh, and we are going to keep on working with you to make sure that uh, the first Americans get uh, the best possible chances in life uh, in a way that's consistent with your extraordinary traditions and culture and values. Now, I have to say, though, that uh, beyond that, uh, I had planned to make some broader remarks uh, about the challenges that lay ahead uh, for Native Americans as well as collaboration with our administration. Uh, but as some of you might have heard, there has been a tragic shooting at the Fort Hood Army Base in Texas. Uh, we don't yet know all the details at this moment. Uh, we will share them as we get them. Uh, what we do know is that uh, a number of American soldiers have been killed and even more have been wounded in a horrific outburst of violence. My immediate thoughts and prayers are with the wounded and with the families of the fallen and with those who live and serve at Fort Hood. Now, these are men and women who have made the selfless and courageous decision to risk and at times give their lives to protect the rest of us on a daily basis. It's difficult enough when we lose these brave Americans in battles overseas. Uh, it is horrifying that they should come under fire at an army base on American soil. I've spoken to Secretary Gates and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen, and I will continue to receive a constant stream of updates as new information comes in. We are working with the Pentagon, the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, all to ensure that Fort Hood is secure, and we will continue to support the community with the full resources of the federal government. In the meantime, I would ask all Americans to keep uh, the men and women of Fort Hood in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, we will make sure that we get answers to every single question uh, about this uh, horrible incident. And uh, I want all of you to know that uh, as Commander in Chief, uh, th there's no greater honor but also no greater responsibility for me uh, than to make sure that the extraordinary men and women in uniform uh, are properly cared for uh, and that their safety and security uh, when they are at home uh, is provided for. So we are going to uh, stay on this. Uh, but I hope in the meantime that all of you uh, recognize uh, the scope of this tragedy and uh, keep everybody in their thoughts and prayers. Uh, again, thank you for your participation uh, here today.